You're like a circle that floats around. Let me give you guys an introduction. Hi everyone, welcome to White Canvas Arts. My name is Sharanya and I have been hosting this workshop, uh, the digital workshop, this is the second month, uh, but the workshops themselves have been running for over six months now. Um, I do two workshops every month, the second Sunday and the fourth Sunday. The second Sunday is the digital painting workshop and the fourth Sunday is an acrylic painting workshop. Um, both are different mediums but um, same similar concepts so painting um, and uh, without further ado unless you guys have any questions we can get started okay let me introduce uh, what we're going to do today hopefully you can see me as well as see my hands moving you should see my iPad on screen okay if you cannot let me know all right okay so we're going to be doing this picture i did paint it so my screen is a little darker my lights are a little darker so you can see my ipad screen but that's the picture we're going to be working on today so i designed it and i printed it out so you can see it as well as work on it and um, i'm using an ipad pro it's a 12 inch ipad pro um, and i'm also using an apple pencil these go together. Do not use any other kind of pen because they are cheaper. The Apple Pencil has tilt um, controls that the iPad um, can sense and the app can sense. So it's very important to use these two guys together. Um, it is one of the most expensive options. There are other options available. Um, there's Huion, that's a good uh, brand out there. It's cheaper. Uh, Wacom is also a very good brand. They have uh, tablets that uh, range close to 100 bucks. Um, the only thing when you're using those tablets is you will need to hook it up to a laptop or a computer and they will go with a, a software called Autodesk Sketchbook. So the reason I recommend that is it's free and it's available in all platforms. So PC, Mac, Android, iPad, you can use it in anything. Um, but because it is free, it has a few less features. Um, it is still user friendly. It is still a big beginner friendly app, but I personally love the Procreate. I've only been using the Procreate the last three months, but it's so easy to pick up that everything I've known so far, I was able to translate to this. And I do mention Photoshop often, Photoshop is also widely popular, uh, but it is a monthly subscription of 10 or 20 bucks. It, over time, it slightly gets expensive added to the equipment cost as well. So if you're a beginner, start with Autodesk Sketchbook. If you want to make an investment, move towards Procreate. That's um, the route I would use. Can we use Paint? I've already got Autodesk. Um, you can i personally haven't um the only three softwares that i can vouch for is going to be photoshop autodesk sketchbook and procreate anything other there i've heard of gimp um there's a few other softwares as well i've heard of them but i've never personally used them um, the interface for these softwares that i'm talking about today is more user friendly okay, how many of you are new to procreate Probably. Okay, all right, if, even if one person is, I wanted to go through the interface, so let me go through the interface. Um, it's very user-friendly in the sense you use the fingers a lot, so you pinch with two fingers, squeeze, it zooms in and zooms out, so this is pre pretty intuitive. And uh, with your pencil, if you draw on the tablet, so that is um, pretty much drawing, you use two fingers and tap, it undoes. And three finger and tap will redo. So this is like the very, very basic you need to know. Um, and it's the really coolest part. I love doing this a lot. So, but it does help to zoom in and zoom out very quickly. Do we have to use Procreate? You don't have to. Uh, which one are you using, Saria? Oh, I'm just using a canvas. Like oh, yeah, you, that is completely fine. So you just, you know, tune yourself out when I'm going through this process. And when we start drawing, you can follow along. Oh, thank you. Okay, all right. And then um, the 
the pens are up here so this is the pen tool there's a bunch of stuff I will tell you the ones we are using so you click on it to change the type of brush you're using so that's the brush tool so that's the one that I've used here how much is procreate um, procreate is 10 bucks even that's it you pay it once and then you have it forever oh, okay. yeah and uh, the this is the eraser so you click on the eraser to select it you click it again if you want to change it to a different kind of eraser this is the same list as you have under the brush tools so essentially um, it's the same thing so if I select a brush um, sorry I'm going to select an eraser any type is fine and then I can you know erase whatever I've drawn so these two are pretty straightforward again to increase and decrease the size of the eraser it's it's this um, handle here on the top so don't use the one in the bottom that's different we're only using the one in the top to increase and decrease the size of the brush we're using so everyone good so far I don't want to hurry and you know um, we do have a lot of time so I'll go a little at a time so so far we've seen one is the brush two is the eraser and then three is the resize that's the one that's the handle here and then four I did redo and undo so those are the four things I've shown so far so everyone clear on those instructions be better so you can see here there's two squares up there so that's the layers panel we will be using this a lot today so by the end of today's class you're gonna be a pro at this so you click on it so these are layered one on top of the other so you draw on one layer you can create another layer using this plus sign here and then um, you can automatically see this layer is selected so anything that I draw will now be on this layer so let me draw something in blue so you can see my scratch that's in blue is going to come up in my second layer so it doesn't affect my layer one and anything that I draw on an active new layer only gets saved there so this is very efficient and it helps you keep your drawing separate and your colors separate so it's very very fun to use this so that's the fourth that's the last thing I'm teaching so five is layer so this is all you need to know today to get started yes Leslie I will definitely um, will let you know and yes uh, I uh, I am so sorry about today I will try and make sure I have closed caption next time um, we do have a workshop this is the first time I'm coming across this I should have um, you know thought about it my apologies but I will make sure that you get a video with closed caption um, just leave your email in the chat I think you have I'll make sure you get an email uh, with the video with the closed caption thank you so much you're welcome thank you so much. yes okay. sure Hi. yes and then um i typed it in but there's nothing that called that's called auto dust catch me there should be um sorry i will not be able to help you you should have your parent or someone help you um figure that one out and download it so it is called autodesk sketchbook it's there on the chat Okay, I can probably show you what the app looks like. So you can, um, let me see if I can. So can you see this pencil? Can you see me pointing on the screen to this pencil, the red box with the pencil there? That's what the app looks like and this is Procreate and that's what Procreate looks like. You guys are good, we do have time. Um, I did set aside time for this, so I'm not in a hurry. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay, so what I did just now is clearing a layer. You use three fingers, tap, and then zigzag move your fingers. It will clear the whole layer. So it's easy. There are a lot of things like this that Procreate offers. You will not be able to follow everything along in the first class. Just hang in there. It's a very versatile software. And then the more you use all these tips and tricks, you can, you know, easily get started. 
Um, all right, so the first thing we're gonna do is draw this picture. So to draw it out, right, okay, so I'll walk you through this guy step by step, and then um, these ones here I've added, um, You will. I will walk you through one bat. Everything else you guys should be able to do. Um, the way I teach, I teach you a little bit and I ask you to experiment as well because that's how you learn the most. So um, that's how we will approach this painting as well. I've got this aside um, just because I want you guys to see what I'm doing. But if at any time you want to see the picture, let me know. I can put it up um, closer to the screen. All right, to get started, the brush we are going to use is in the calligraphy section and it's called brush pen i'll go through this one at a time so click on your brush tool in the calligraphy section you have brush pen so that's the brush i'm going to be using first thing we're going to do is ballpark the uh, the pumpkin head so you can see how here it's a square head so evil things have uh, different shapes they don't really have rounded tips so even though it looks rounded he has a very square shape so start with the square shape again you don't have to be perfect about this i'm only going to ballpark the pumpkin head here so this is like a rough sketch we do this multiple times until we get the actual shape we want and there we go so that's like a general head so from the head we do have a small branch so i'm only again going to indicate where my branches are going to go i'm still not doing any details so this is called a gesture drawing we are only figuring out where everything goes so next comes his collar and bow tie so the collar is more like a triangular shape again don't worry about these curves the general shape is just a triangle so nice pointed tip on both sides and the triangle goes down after this comes the bow tie the bow tie is in the middle and again I'm only doing basic shapes so if you're doing this with a pencil um, draw this gesture very lightly you will add details on top and you will eventually erase this part because it's digital I just do it on a layer and I won't use this layer after I'm done with this step so that's kind of how um, digitally it works so I've got the bow tie the bow tie is slightly larger I did that on purpose so I can um, show you guys as well how to modify these things as we go along. And now for the coat. The coat also if you see though it's rounded here it's more of a square shape on both sides. So I'm going to kind of draw a square shape on both sides. So it comes from the bow tie. So a little shoulder there and then go down. And I'm just going to make this wider just because I don't want them to look even. Don't draw things evenly. The uneven they are, the more natural they look. Hello, I just joined. Yeah, hi, Saharsha. You should be able to follow along. We're only doing a gesture. So if you're using a pencil or a paper, draw this step lightly. If you're using um, um, a digital equipment, then you can create a new layer and get started. What do we do next? Alright, so if you look at my picture here, I've kind of drawn him in my entire picture. He's got more uh, coat right here. So the length of my coat is shorter here. So this is the part where I have to resize. My, my painting is different than the size I've drawn here. My drawing is bigger. So to rectify this, I have to make this guy smaller and move, move him a little bit. So that's easy with digital softwares. If you're drawing this and you make this mistake, you pretty much have to redraw it. But digitally, it's easy. So I'm currently on this layer. Can you see this um, arrow here that looks like a mouse pointer? So you click on that and it immediately pops up a resizing tool. So let me show you, you can see those marching ants. That's the resizer tool. And in Procreate, it's very easy. You use your finger, squeeze it and move it around. So there we go. So I can 
squeeze him and move him around. I've made him just a little bit shorter so I can add longer coats. And there we go. The gesture drawing is fine. You just want a ballpark um, areas. You don't have to worry about too many details at this point. The details are yet to come. Let's finish out the, um, so mark the parts where you want the bats to go. So we're just going to generally mark them with an oval shape or like an eye. So this way you know that that's where the bat is going to go. It doesn't matter. You don't worry about the details. Just draw the eye because that's where your bats are going to go. And then you can add an oval for the spiders. So you pre that's kind of you telling yourself, okay, this is where I'm going to place the spider and this is where everything else is going to go. So I've kind of marked those spots. Do you guys understand why we are doing this step? Why is this step the first thing we do? Go ahead, Saurya. Well, because um, we want to get the proportions right and draw lightly. And when we're done, we could add in the details and then outline it thickly. So Correct. We won't get, so when we, if we want to erase, it won't come like really sharp and you won't see it. Correct. That's exactly right. This is the part where you decide the size, the proportions, and uh, the elements in your picture. So that's kind of what we've done. So let's get to the next step. This is the important step where we start adding details. So you want your drawing at this point to be more clear and uh, more, um, how do I say it, more concise and clear. So to do that, I'm going to reduce my opacity on this layer. So basically, I'm going to make this layer lighter so that I can visually see what I want to do next. So to do that, you click on your layer, uh, you click on this N here. So your layer has to be selected and there is an N that kind of um, pops down more options and it has the opacity slider here. So you can see how at 30% I have a very, very light drawing. So I'm going to increase it a little bit so you guys can see, but that's the slider you want to use. Go for 30%. That's the best number. So this layer is done. Let's go to the next layer. We're not going to disturb this at all. We're going to now draw on a new layer and that will be our detail layer. So I'm going to click on the plus sign here in the top. So click on that and that gets you the new layer and let's start um, drawing on this. So Wait, when I'm... What can, we name, what can we name this layer if we want a new layer? You can name it detail or outline. Okay. Yeah, um, to rename the layer in um, Procreate, you click on the word, it pops um, more options on the side and rename is at the top. So you can click on that and then you can rename it detail or outline. So there's that. And to start detailing, I zoom in. Now comes the part where I want to really see what I'm doing. So I zoom in, I reduce my pen size, and then I start adding in the details and fixing my pumpkin guy. So I'm going to show you what the pumpkin guy looks like. So he's like this. So we want to add those details in. They look like cracks, so you want to start them thicker at the base and they go thinner as they go outwards. And the eyes are in the middle, so triangle shaped. This is just a squiggly shape that I'm adding, oh, so the middle ones are... I'm, I'm using, uh, under calligraphy, I'm using brush pen. All right. brush pen looks different than yours? Mine's just flat and oval, so it, it should look like this. Can you see? That's the basic shape. Do we do the same thing on the bottom? Yes, we do the exact same thing on the bottom. So you just add these cracks again, make sure they're thicker at the bottom and they get thinner as they go up. And I like using the brush pen because the, the if you don't put pressure, it gives you a thin line. You put pressure, it gives you a thicker line. So it's just very easy to draw with this. And do we do this on the sides as well? Mm -hmm. I'm only connecting two of them. So in the middle, those lines are, they're not connected. So can you see how only the side one is connected? Everything else in the middle is all not connected. 
Okay, so the back of these, again, if you look, let me zoom in and show you, I've added squiggly lines. So don't make them flat. The squiggly they are, the meaner he's going to look. We don't want someone that looks very sweet. We want the scary look to come across. So it's better to have sharp angles and curves and in unexpected places. So I'm even going to fix these curves here. They're too curvy, so I'm just going to erase them a little bit and then um, square them out. So make tiny, tiny changes like that. Make it your own pumpkin. Um, it doesn't have to look the way I've created it. Mine's a too small, but I, I did the sketching lightly, so I was able to erase it and make it bigger. Oh, that's good. If you're using digital software, you should be able to um, resize it. I know, even though I was using a canvas. Oh, okay, you were using a canvas, okay. Um, that's good, because you drew it lightly, you were able to reconfigure it, that's good, that's great. Okay, so there's my pumpkin done. So I did take a little more time to take care of my details and my lines. My lines are thinner towards the center of the pumpkin and thicker at the end. And I'm gonna make a very thick bottom line because that's where we have a lot of shadow. So we want this to be this nice and thick. Yep, that looks excellent. Nice work. What do you do next? Do you like color it kind of in? So I'm coloring it in because it's digital. If you're painting it, then you want to finish the whole drawing and paint that portion black. Pretty done. Awesome, Sai. Yes, I'm, I'm, give me a minute to catch up. I know you are all usually fast. Give me a second to catch up. Okay, so the next step is gonna be the bow tie. Remember I said my bow tie is very huge. So when I'm gonna draw this step, I'm gonna make it slightly smaller. Okay, so there we go. So that's one half of my bow tie. Let me give you a close up. And then here's my other half. And remember I said I'm gonna make this shorter. So I've made it shorter than my gesture drawing, which is in the background. All right, now comes the coat collar. You wanna have a flare that goes out, so don't do stiff lines. For this one, you wanna have a nice sweeping curve, so try an S-curve, and you wanna flare out of the neck that comes out. So you wanna flare outwards. So try for an S-curve that goes outwards in this direction at the top here. So again, mirror the same, and that kind of gives you the flare. And uh, to make the flare more enhanced, I'm making another curve here. So at the top, dip down and then connect the ends. So again, that adds to the flare. So the next step is the coat. Again, you wanna make sure the shoulders are nice and visible and uh, make sure the shoulders are rounded a little bit. So I start with that curve there. So I know that's the part I'm gonna round. And then you just have to connect it to the collar don't connect it to the bow tie okay we want to connect the coat to the collar and then at the bottom again add a flare that goes outwards okay now for the details on the coat so this one's easy so um, you just have to follow along I'm going to show you up here what I'm doing but it's pretty straightforward at this point. Oh, and Procreate has a quick shape tool. So if you want a straight line, you have to draw the line and hold your pen at the end. Don't remove it from the iPad. So when you leave it there, it kind of creates a straight line. Okay, so let me try that again. Um, Saurya, can you unmute mute, please? Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Um, so again, let me draw that straight line. So you draw a line, it can be very squiggly, but you hold it and then it'll straighten itself out. You can add any kind of branch at the top, anything is fine. So I'm following the gestures that I gave and that's the direction in which I'm creating my branches. All right, so for the bat itself, um, so these are the parts where I decided to draw my bats. So I'm gonna go closer and show you, I'm gonna do this one. So to draw the bat, you wanna draw two curves that touch only at the bottom, leave the top open. 
okay and then connect the top with the u shape that creates the top uh, the body of the bat and then after that it's just wings okay so this guy you can draw the bat's wings two ways with the curve on the top or even with the u shape on the top so try and modify these a little bit so it just looks different every time you draw otherwise again remember um, if you copy the same shapes they become very monotonous so if you look at mine I've got one that's curved upwards and this guy is a u-shaped curve so same thing here this is curved outwards and this is a u-shaped curve so like I said mix and match shapes and designs so your drawings and your paintings and designs look more organic so I'm going to finish out both of these bats can I do five bats? Can I do four bats and three spiders? You can do whatever you want. This is your painting. You can, can draw you other something? creepy crawly things if you know what it is. You can draw a ghost if you want. Have fun with it, guys. This is just an idea. This is not the start and the end of any painting or any design. So make it your own. Add more stuff if you need to. Can you teach us how to do a spider? Yeah, yes. The spider is the easy part. Um, let's make sure everyone's done with the bats. Can you show the reference? Yeah. Sir? I'm not done. Not done? Um, can I give you a few minutes at the end? Because the bats are going to be easy. Let me show you the spider. There's two different kinds. And then I'll give you about a couple of minutes to finish up all of these. That's fine. Okay, alright. So this one's the first one. This is easy. Do you guys really need me to show you how to do this? No. It's a circle with eight legs, that's it, and add eyes and uh, mouth. And then for this guy, I did add the spider, um, the string coming out. So this one's the hardest, so let me show you this. So it's it's right here. How does the mouth look like again? Feels better. Oh. Okay, so for this fellow here so if you look really carefully I'm going to show you uh, and draw at the same time so you have the reference as well so I start with the u-shaped curve that goes like this you want the edge to be small and this end to be wide okay start with that then add two short lines that go towards the center and at this point you add the head which is just a circle so that's the general shape of the spider I added two um, tiny uh, I think those are his feelers and uh, pincers so those come at the top so two short ones in the middle and then two curved ones right beside it so this is essentially the head and then you add the legs so I added two legs facing front and two legs facing back like I said after this I'll give you guys all some time and then you can um, kind of fix up your painting however you want and there's that spider okay any anybody need more time yeah i do okay i'll give you a few more minutes and in the meantime um just to give you guys a quick recap for what's coming next month so this is the painting we'll be working on next month this one's digital two um so this one's the one that i've got planned for um november's digital painting workshop so this is the painting for that and if you guys are interested in joining us later this month this is the picture we are going to do acrylic painting for um, so this is the one planned for later this month so this is like the fourth Sunday I think it's October 24th if I'm not wrong so, so I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to make sure this layer is below my outline layer so see this detail is my outline layer so I need layer 3 which is going to be my color layer so let's rename it color are there layers in the auto desk? yes there is so you click on the color drag it and drop it right below detail 
so your color layer is always below your outline that looks very good Saurya very good drawing and another tip is use one color per layer so if you're using a different color even if it is yellow and orange yellow goes on one layer orange goes on another layer so I've got my color layer okay and then I'm gonna call this color BG basically background so this is going to be my background color and it's a shade of orange so you pretty much have to pick orange on your color key and the color key is this circle here in the top so if you this is the first time you're using procreate it's pretty intuitive actually you click on the circle at the top and then you select orange um, I have a question yes if you're using paper mm -hmm. then um, you have to use acrylic paint Yes, but don't paint it. Don't start painting it now, my dear. It'll take at least 10 minutes to finish the background, and this is a drag and drop. I'm going to be done in like two seconds. So do the background after class. Okay, so if you're doing it digitally, you can follow along. If you're using paints, please do the background after class. So you click and you drag the orange onto the paper, and you're done. That's it for the background. Okay, for those of you who are new to Procreate, the drag and drop only works if you have an outline because our detail layer is separate we have to retrace the same object again on the layer we are coloring so see my black layer i'm going to outline this bat again so you just have to pretty much trace it once and then you can drag the color over and fill the remaining parts which colors do we need so there we go. I outline the bat again. I click and drag my color and then I fill the spots in the middle. That's it. Okay, so there's my bat. So the next step is the bat's eyes is going to be white. So switch your color to white and also go to the next layer. So my black layer is here. I'm going to click my plus sign and create an entirely new layer I'm gonna call this white I'm pretty much only naming them the colors I use just because um, it's easier for me to keep track of those but you can give whatever name you want you can even do spider space but it's just too long um, and I just do this this is easier so pretty much oh, our detail layer is going to have to be erased so here's the problem I have let me show you so can you see I already have black eyes and this black eye is in my detail layer so when I try to draw white it doesn't show up because my black is there hiding the white so in your detail layer if you've drawn the eyes like I have go ahead and erase it we don't want that to show up and then now you can go to your white layer and draw the eyes okay now for the main event the pumpkin guy the pumpkin guy is a darker orange um, instead of saying a darker orange it's better to say it's more redder orange so when you select your orange select the usual orange but then move this slider can you see this slider move that towards the red color and then that makes your orange slightly reddish orange and that's the orange for the pumpkin we want him to look angrier so the orange has a shade of red in it again i know i keep repeating I'm this should we blend orange and red together? Yes, Saurya. If you're using paints, yes, that's exactly what you're supposed to do. I'm going for a new layer and I'm going to call this pumpkin head and outline, drag and drop. So you just have to outline with your orange. I should probably put more orange because yeah. it's going to become too correct yes otherwise it'll become too this parts are all going to be just drag and drop so you just need to do an outline and you drag and drop the color it's pretty easy with procreate so you can see how inside I'm doing an orange outline and then I'm just going to drag and drop the color 
Yes. And you can do the same thing for the the bow tie. The bow tie and the head are the same color. So and they can be on the same layer. So you can color in the bow tie same orange. Now let's do the face. The face is yellow. So this yellow and the waistcoat yellow are almost the same. Okay, all right, so the yellow again, let me repeat, it's closer to the orange. If you're using paints, add a tiny bit of orange to your lemon yellow. It will make the yellow a little orangey, and that's the shade you want to use. So, and then that's the shade I've got, and I'm going to color the eyes in. So I created a new layer for my yellow, and we're going to do the same yellow for the waistcoat. The waistcoat, again, remember, outline, drag and drop. That's the easiest and fastest. What do we do next? Next is color the coat black. You can do this on the same black layer you have. You don't need to select a new layer for this. You already have a black layer, so you can use the same layer for it. And um, in digital, it's just pretty much outline, drag and drop. So every second week you do this? Mm -hmm. Every second Sunday. Yeah. I also have a regular weekly class where I teach illustration and animation along with digital painting. So the animation and illustration classes come only with my regular weekly classes. I don't do them as part of a workshop. And all the workshop pictures are all going to be beginner pictures. It will never be an advanced picture at all, but just because it has to um, be catered to a lot of different people. But the more, more techniques you want to learn, you want to do a regular weekly class, and those ones have animation and illustration in it as well. Do you have animation? Do you have animation? Do I have animation meaning? Do I teach animation? Yes, I do. Wait, what's the other thing that you recommended? Like, instead of auto, the auto desk sketchbook and appropriate? Um, did you say? The last one was Photoshop. Is that one money too? That one's um, a monthly subscription. It's a more powerful software, so it's for professionals more than beginners. Oh. Do you use it? Yes. Huh? Yes. But it's more for photo editing than drawing? No, no. It's um, for both. Both photo professionals use it for photo editing, and digital painters use it for digital painting as well. So let me show you a few of them. Before I got my iPad and my Apple pencil, I did... What was that, my dear? It's definitely not from beginners. You can. It's just more harder to pick up. So this one was created with Photoshop. And this one also was created with Photoshop. So with Photoshop, um, it's, it's also as versatile as Procreate. So if Procreate is just more accessible and more beginner friendly. But if you want to do powerful things, um, you should definitely learn Photoshop. If you're thinking of a serious career in uh, art or digital painting, Photoshop is a must know. So, the, um, so like I said, I started with Photoshop. Procreate was just like a recent thing. What do we do next? So the next one, the next step is going to be um, detail. So I finished coloring my branch black as well. So I've done all the base coats, all the base colors for my entire picture is done. Now comes the details part. Um, the color layers also have details. So for this one, we're going to pick on the layer we want. And then I'm going to show you something really cool that is only possible with, uh, well, it's possible in all of the digital softwares, but it's, it's, it's really cool in, in Procreate. Is everyone ready or do I need to wait for anyone? This is going to be important, so I want you to pay attention. So I can do it on my own. Canvas right now? You can, you can, you, you can do it in the canvas, but this technique is uh, software related. Okay, so we're gonna add, um, we're gonna add these lines. Can you see? I have some can you orange. Just wait? Yes. Can you just wait for two minutes? I can wait. I can wait. Yeah, like I mentioned, this is important, so I'll wait. What do we do next? 
Um, I was asked to wait. I'm not sure who it was. Um, so if you're done, my dear, we can move on. All right. Okay. I'm going to get started. So I'm on my black. My software for some reason was not letting me like do the auto fill thing. So I still on the head. Oh, uh, did you do the outline? So how Procreate behaves is it if it, there is no outline, it doesn't know where to fill. So on the I layer you want to fill. Outline, but it didn't work for some reason. If there are holes in your outline, it won't work. I do not know why it wasn't working. Okay, let's let me. I if. If we have time after class, uh, in another 10-15 minutes, then show me what you're seeing. I'll see if I can help you. Okay? Okay. All right. I'm, like, I'm almost done with the head. I'll see if it does it more, then I'll show you. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're going to do these black, uh, these orange outlines on the black coat. So we want these lines to be restricted to only the coat. We don't want the lines to show up outside. So yes, we can carefully draw the lines um, on another layer, but it's very easy by using alpha lock. Alpha lock uh, is where you restrict any further drawing to an already painted area. So say for example, you have a circle, and if you alpha lock that layer, you will only be able to draw inside the circle. You can draw outside it. So that's what alpha lock does. It just locks the rest of the empty areas. So to, create, to activate alpha lock, use two fingers, click on the layer, and then slide it to the left. So you can see how there's a checker pattern that appears. So that means this layer is alpha locked. And this makes it very easy to add details that is restricted to an already painted area. Okay, so two fingers, click on your layer and slide it to the left. Okay, so the, not the left, sorry, the right. So click on it, two fingers, and then slide it to the right. That does alpha lock. Now I'm going to go back to my orange. Remember slightly redder orange. And then I'm going to add the detail on the... So the alpha lock is the same thing we're going to do for the pumpkin's head as well. I'll repeat it again. So let me know when you're ready to do it. I'm going to do the white detail, the yellow details for the pumpkin's head. Again, two fingers, alpha lock the pumpkin head. And switch to a yellow color so you can add the yellow details for the pumpkin. The yellow details are just highlights. So you can add them like this. I'll leave this here so you can kind of see that as well as my drawing and then add it in. Okay, so the last one is adding all of these shadows. You can see how they're very soft shadows and the effect is really cool with the embossing. Um, it looks like those are embossed, so that's the one I'm going to show you right now. I'll repeat this a couple of times because it's, you know, it's got a few steps. But um, once you finish it, the effect is very cool. The first thing is the brush. We will switch to a different brush. It's called an airbrush. So let's click on our brush. And then you can see there is a separate um, collection of brushes called airbrush. So you select the airbrush and then um, I just simply usually use a soft brush or a soft blend. Either one of those will work. So I'm just going to use a soft brush for now. So select that. That's going to be the brush we're using. That's step one. The next is going to be the size of the airbrush. So go for a size that's like this. Don't go for too big or too small. You want something in the middle. And step three is going to be the layer. We want a layer at the bottom of everything. So I'm going to select my lowermost layer, my layer one. Remember, it was my gesture drawing. So select that layer. We want the shadow to be above it. So I select that layer and I click on a plus. It creates a new layer right on top of that. So it kind of helps you navigate where you want to create your layer. So I'm going to rename this and call this shadow step three. Okay. The last step is click on the end here 
and you're going to change this layers mode to multiply so the you click on the N and then it gives you a lot of options multiply is at the top so you want to do multiply and then select your layer again this N will become M and that's the one you want so you want to multiply layer this is the last step and this is the most important and crucial step of them all now comes the easy fun part you select the same orangish red you don't have to change another color that's what's cool about the multiply layer it still just has to be the same orange red and I'm gonna just start coloring right below my bats and this will show up nice work Saria that looks awesome thank you can I take a picture of yours for a moment sure Oh, it's below my background layer. Let's push this up. So make sure it's above the background layer, otherwise it's not gonna show up. Okay, all right, that was a really quick one, but that's pretty much all you have to do. I'll fix it after this, but all the steps are done. You just have to fine tune your work. Right now it looks, you know, very hurriedly done. That's usually what happens. You do need to sit down and spend time to refine the way it looks. And I will be doing that after this. Officially class time is over and we're done with all the steps.